Hello there and welcome to a new episode of Afterthoughts. Tonight I've recorded Clementi, this sonata. And so on. I don't know if you know this piece, but it's, it's rather, uh, un, it's, it's not often played, but actually that's pity because the beginning seems to be a bit bombastic, but if we place Clementi in the time, and we've done some Clementi recordings uh, in the previous months, I will link them in the, in the description box, but this is actually one of the first sonatas of uh, Clementi, in this edition, which is a 19th century Breitkopf, uh, Breitkopf and Heftel edition, it's um, okay. In this edition, is Opus Two, Number One, but there are uh, at least two different uh, Opus numbers for the sonatas of Clementi. But it's a very early one, 1781, and actually the same the time of which we talked about, and I think almost six months or one year ago about Mozart and Clemente, the famous competition on Christmas Eve 1781. This is really a sonata that fits in exactly in that time and Clemente was touring throughout Europe and this sonata number one, I mean 1781 and you come somewhere and you play this <laughs> Further on with all octaves and further on with 16th notes, very virtuoso. Um, he must have been a personality that um, liked to take some risks. I mean, this is very unusual music for that time. We've talked in the past also about the technical skills of Clementi. I think at that time there were not many musicians, maybe the late Bach school, but in another way that matched the technical skills that Clementi uh, developed. Mozart uh, obviously heard him playing and was rather negative about him, but you can read between the lines that he was rather impressed. And you see the influence of Clementi in his later works, certainly on the technical field. Um, also on the on the on the um, musical uh, aspect, and we come to that in a minute. I just show you some some difficulties. The beginning is of course with this, which would make on the pianoforte a bit more effect maybe. But this this bass is really working well, well with this music. By the way, 1781, there were not so many, so much pianofortes available. Um, of course, in England and Great Britain, where it came from, it was touring from Great Britain, I think, to Italy, and then went to Vienna in a few years, actually. But in, in, in Great Britain, of course, you had the clavier, the tough, the, 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 um, the piano, which was, were actually uh, German clavichord builders, went to England and made, changed the mechanic. But um, it works great on this clavichord. And okay, if you con if you continue, you see a kind of independence of the left and right hand, which seems not to be difficult, but is very tricky. <laughs> about this music I think a little bit too far as being a little bit bombastic but again seeing the date of the of the piece 7081 and listening a bit further than all, only the first bars to me at least shows that this music is really going somewhere and that's always the case with Clementi he is very good in, in the form he really masters the form of the sonata 
So also here it comes to a beautiful end. Beautiful end. It's a real nice orchestral opening for this solo. Sorry. A very simple melody, very Mozart-like. Um, a lot of contrast at the beginning. And then a very, very nice modulation. And then what he does then, and that is something you should think of when you play this piece at the beginning. It's indicated presto with the alla breve sign. It's not an alla breve in the real sense of the word. But if you play it faster than that, you come across these 16 notes, which are then very, very fast. So in tempo I choose, they are like this. And so on. So that's actually rather fast, not only on a clavichord, but also on an early piano. <coughs> because you have to make sound and then comes the repetition I mean what's this about what's this I mean on the clavichord of course it's faster than the, than, than the repetition mechanic of a modern grand piano I mean, it's very, very, very fast. The pianos of those days that Clementi knew in England, the tafel pianos, they were they're not capable of doing this. You have to play it slower, and maybe it's, the music is intended to be to be played slower, but at least the presto indicates that, that, he, that he wants a rather fast tempo. So again, the repetitions on the harpsichord, they might work as it, if it is a really fine action, but even then, this is very, very, very fast. Um, and I, I don't think that it's real harpsichord music. It's in the, there is an indication also of uh, piano and forte, and there is more, uh, I, um, a kind of romantic feeling. I mean, if you come to this, Travel is a little bit out of tune because we played the last part as well. And the instrument here, it's again my own instrument, it's just arrived, so it it's, needs a bit of stabilization. And by the way, the Erar Grand Piano is back on his leg, so uh, that's between brackets. And just as a side remark, uh, but this is this is, is is really opening the way for Beethoven. <laughs> at that time and then again the technical difficulty this is really unseen at that time That's something that's very difficult. I mean, you have the 16 notes and then the triplets, and it comes to a beautiful end. There's so much in this music that, again, I think it's it's 
it's really good music I think it's not going very deep but it touches just on what it needs to be needs needs to have actually and then the middle section <laughs> I mean again remember 7081 Mozart writes even not at the time is a vous dire je maman and then Clementi comes with this <laughs> just have to con have to be relaxed and so I make it small turns with my wrist because if you play that with a very firm wrist not only the sound is not as good you I mean you can't make sound on the clavichord and actually also sound becomes better on a piano forte when you just hit the key from above directly with the arm rate and speed of the finger in the key so this is this is less less beautiful less less full actually as a sound but turning also means relaxation then you have the left hand with the octaves which is of course not too difficult but combined with the right hand that is stressing I mean um, you have to relax as much as you can but at the end if you play this complete full page it's hard working certainly also when you have difficult positions like this Emphasize the the, uh, the lowest. There's a little bit of relaxation here. So it just continues and continues, and then if you think from. If you really need some rest, it just continues in a kind of late rock style. And really then, again, a new difficulty. I mean, it's over an octave with it, with it, with a third. Oh. And as a repeater, so full of difficulties, and what you should give to Clementi is the fact that he that he that he makes music out of it it's not mere technique it's music and it has some novelties that at the time i think must have worked as an astonishing to the people who listen to him okay and then the rondo spirituoso we can we go just we touch some elements also in the technical field it's a very beautiful thing when clement is at his best, he can he matches the real to the greatest composers. I mean, Mozart and Haydn, of course, are masters. But Clementi is kind of composer. I feel that just touches slightly upon something and just leaves it and proceeds. Mozart starts to compose really, and Beethoven, of course, continues in that tradition. Clementi just touches with some genius. He makes a beautiful theme, he develops a little bit and then he goes next to the next sonata. Um, this rondo is really beautiful. It is full of contrast but also of difficulties. I mean you have here at the end again. but just to continue it in a very controlled manner well, 
Again, 1781, Mozart writes his Abu Di Regiment also with the long trills, one year or two years, two years later. Um, the beautiful minore part. <laughs> Poetic as a Haydn rondo would be, maybe not, but it has something different, and it again it opens the way to Beethoven. And it's playing this on the clavichord again. What instruments were available? You had also the Duncan piano, you had the harpsichord, obviously, it was very present in, in the concert life. The clavichord was more present in, in, in the smaller concert life, I think, not in the but. It was there, and the early pianos. That's very difficult music for that for those for that mechanic. So the clavichord for me and this instrument in particular is very uh, satisfying, I think. Uh, so that's just between brackets, but because in the at the end it's not the most important thing, but an interesting discussion. So that was Clementi. Technical difficulties. Beautiful harmonies opening the way for the 19th century. Underestimated composer. I'm really convinced of that. And I've said it in the past, and we will do much more Clementi as I have time for that. And some sonatas are waiting. Um, and then we talk further about Clementi. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the recording. If you do so, please subscribe to the videos, share it with your friends, and we we'll see each other very soon again. Bye.